Hello and welcome to the continuation of my Eurocylinder exploration series. This video is dedicated to two DOM locks. One is a regular pin tumbler and the other one is a dimple lock. The company DOM is a German lock company that uh, makes all different kinds of locks and it's actually a world player. It's uh, still located in Germany and also making the locks in Germany. The history goes back to 1936 when uh, Josef Voss, the founder, created his company uh, located in Köln in the Domstraße 12 and they were starting by uh, selling metal hardware and not making locks. After World War II they moved to Brühl which is close to Köln and started making locks. And they named the locks according to the big church uh, in Köln, which is called the Dom. And so we know, now know why the locks are called Dom, because of the yeah, big church in Köln that is called Dom. In 1989, Black and Decker bought uh, the Dom company, and since 2005 they are part of the French uh, Securidev group. So from the package you can read Black and Decker. So we know, so we know uh, that these locks are at least 11 years old, but they are still in uh, mint condition, and you can find uh, many of these still on German doors. So now let me give you a quick look to a map of Germany so that you can see where um, Köln is located. It's the red arrow here. It's in the midwestern part of uh, Germany. And here we see a picture of the Kölner Dom. And it's uh, also uh, part of the world uh, culture heritage. And so, so now you know why these locks are called Dom. Dom. So, back to the locks. I will clamp them in a vise, pick it and cut it and we will see what magic they have in. So let me start with a dimple lock. Here are the cuts in the key, two deep cuts in the back, shallow cuts in the front. Works nice and smooth and is locked up. There is not uh, much room left uh, on the tip of the pins, so I want to prevent oversetting of course, and uh, that's why I go in at an angle here and only try to uh, catch the pins um, at the tip. Go front to back and back to front. And now one is binding. When I first picked this lock, it took me about ah, 30 minutes to figure out all the different con configuration, which uh, pick to use and uh, where to tension and so on and so forth. But once you have, um, yeah, you find out what how to do it, it's uh, it's pretty good reproducible. So now I'm on three. I think I got three. Okay, I've seen that the core turned a little bit. Uh, yeah, there was a counter rotation. And now I'm on the back pins that gave me feedback. Try from the other side to avoid oversetting because there is much more uh, space left. Let's see what's holding us up. Can't really come through. I think it's number four that blocks the pick. Okay, I'll use a larger flag to go in from the left side and open. All right, so that was lock number one. Now let's move on to the regular pin tumbler. So here is the pin tumbler in the vise, that's the key, nice deep cut in the middle, 
works nice and smooth and is locked up. I apply tension from the pin side and use a thin hook from Peterson to pick it. So all the way to the back. There is not much feedback on the on the plug or on the pins. They seem just to slide into place and hopefully clear the shear line. It's not too difficult, but you have to uh, angle around that, that curve to reach the pins. I think I felt the turn on the core now again. I messed up the picking of that lock um, after the the dimple lock. Uh, I didn't show the key and it took quite long till it opened. Actually, the first opening time of this lock was uh, oh, it's open. Hey, uh, was about uh, five minutes, I think. It just opened like that one. So if it was uh, only populated with uh, uh, standard pins, yeah. But we will have a look. So let's start uh, cutting that one. Here we have the pins of both locks. In the front are the pinning of the dimple lock and in the back of the regular pin tumbler. So first look at the pins of the dimple lock. We can see that all key pins are normal. The drivers in 1 and 2 are standard with the tapering on the end. 3 and 4 are this nice uh, wafer type drivers. 5 again is a standard pin with uh, tapered ends. The springs uh, look like made from copper and when we look at the plug we can see uh, everything's normal, very smooth, very round, nothing flattened. 
looks looks well made. Then move on to the regular pin tumbler. Also here all key pins are normal. Um, the drivers are normal in one and two with a little tapering on the end. Three is a tiny spool, four is a, a longer spool and five again is a standard pin. Interestingly they look different from the color. Three looks like uh, made from copper, uh, two is a little bit darker and one, four and five are gray. But maybe this is uh, caused by the age of this lock. Could be that the coating is, is uh, off here at that pin. I don't know. Uh, springs look make from look like being made from uh, from steel. And the plug uh, again here everything smooth. Uh, nothing uh, nothing flattened. Everything looks very well made. So. I can show you something interesting with my magnet. I put my magnet um, in the back here, and you can see that pins one, uh, that, that the pins of stack number two are are moving. No other pins are doing that, and also here, the pins of stack number two are are moving, and the springs, of course, because they are made from steel. So let's have a closer look to the pins and the stack number two. If we look, uh, if we look at it like that, we can see that they have a steel rod insert, and I think this is for uh, as a drill protection. And the same here for the regular pin tumbler. All right. So this was my Eurocylinder uh, part for the uh, DOM locks, two DOM locks, a dimple lock and a regular pin tumbler. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and happy picking. Bye bye.